We're going to do this blazing fast, actually, guys. We're not going to hang about. We're not going to muck about. We're going to get this done quickly. But here we go. First thing to talk about with Ender Dragons, we have got some patch notes. And we're going to look at the balance here. Like, all the other stuff here is talking about expansion features. But we've got some balance coming down here, guys. Let's go. Here's the fun stuff. So we talked about the PvP stuff already. So let's just talk about PvE. Everything's being nerfed down to five targets. Um, that's also been discussed previously. Let's talk about the things that we didn't know that are happening here. More specifically, the stuff to some of everyone's favorite professions. Renegade, Guardian, okay, Firebrand, and of course, Scourge. Tempest, way better in PvP. We'll definitely see some play there right now. Tempest actually gets screwed really hard in PvE. Very, very sad. Being five target, not good, right? I'm. This is a theme that you see in these notes, which is very interesting, actually. They seem to be reducing a lot of the passive sustain. We see a note here to impact someone. This is the trait that gives you barrier based off your damage and scrap. But that's still really strong, by the way. It's just less ridiculous. This was a really overpowered ability. So I love that they're trying to depower creep it. it it's it's good. I mean, yeah, like this is this was a silly ability it made you unkillable. It's still very strong, but it's still been nerfed significantly from ten percent, I believe, uh, down to five percent. So it is actually a big deal. Uh, Guardian does get nerfed a bit here with stand your ground going down to five. Five targets. Honestly, not a big deal. Still an amazing skill for applying stability to your group. And of course, Firebrand is going to be amazing um, in this patch anyway, because it's not really getting nerfed that hard, whereas other builds are much more significantly. Uh, Dragon Hunter here is going crazy. Uh, I mean, they just, they just changed the trap cooldown. Now the cooldown is lower, but it does less damage. Okay, fine. I guess they want to try and make it like less insanely bursty, I guess, like reduce that very high end burst down, but still keep the DPS broadly the same. Makes sense. Now here's the meat. Firebrand. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, I thought they would do this. Uh, this is one of the nerfs that um, me and some of the guys were speculating about. No Aegis on the heal skill. This is a big hit, actually. This is a big hit. This is one of the most powerful things. You, you'd have this, like, godlike utility just baked in for free. Um, on Mantra of Source on your heal skill, that's now gone. You do get protection and resolution, so that's actually not horrible, to be fair, actually. Uh, prop up time for something like Heal Brand, um, even a little bit of prop up time for regular uh, Ritualist, uh, for example, Ritualist Firebrand will still be really good, because bear in mind, guys, Ritualist gear is in the game now, so you can play like a Ritualist Condi Quickness Firebrand, but now you also have loads of boon duration because of your Ritualist gear, so that will also increase your protection uptime. So actually, in, in some respects, this honestly isn't horrible, because what this means is you can do Quickness, right, a little bit of Might, Fury, and a bit of Prot and Resolution. That's actually not horrible. Definitely a significant nerf. That's definitely a hit. We're nearly in the game here. Look, we're black. Look at that Jade bot, okay? But that is a significant enough. The other stuff, actually not that much of a big deal. This just means that on ad fights, it's not ridiculous. So in other words, renewed justice is when, when you get a kill that grants you experience, you get to use your tome again immediately. They've nerfed this to make it 20% cooldown reduction instead. This is actually more of like, um almost like an open world nerf in a way. So you can't keep spamming that. This applies in some raids and fractals too, when you can get infinite tome ones off. This was broken. I'm sorry, it, it was broken. I, I'm sorry, guys, right? Like... Well-deserved nerf. I wasn't expecting them to do that, actually. Um, I think this is actually a very clever nerf. Um, shout out to the skills team. I think this is a very intelligent thing to realize that's inherently broken, getting infinite um, Tome of Justice. Yeah, that's a good change, actually. Very good change. Uh, and Ash, just, they basically just bug fixed it, basically. So in other words, you just, you know, your, your Ash's stacks are going to go faster when you're cleaving out targets. So that's good. That's fine. Um... This is a good nerf. I, I actually still think that Heal Brand is going to be amazingly strong uh, in PvE, and so will Farmer. Like, Condi DPS Farmer is going to be great, and honestly, you could even argue that the added protection resolution is quite nifty. Bear in mind, you can still take Aegis with Retreat, for example, if you wanted to, uh, quite handily, So it's uh, or the Advance, because Guardians never retreat, so it's not like you just don't have access to any of this stuff. You still will have it, you're just going to have to dedicate to it instead of getting it for free, and that was the core issue with Firebrand Scourge and Renegade. They have way too much OP stuff as a baseline totally for free. I still think this is a very good ability, funnily enough, by the way, guys. This is not a slouch ability by any stretch of the imagination, but this is definitely a nice little tune down uh, for Firebrand. But make no mistake, Condi DPS Firebrand and Heal Firebrand are still going to be some of the most dominant builds 
um, in the game for PvE. Be aware of that. Of course, Signet and Mercy gets nerfed. Uh, we already knew that, though. Good change. Like, the res stuff was really annoying. Oh, Mesmer. Oh, no. Okay, so, of course, Alacrity is going down to five targets. Very good. Now, Mirage has Might. Bear that in mind. And that's actually very powerful. So, Alac Mirage can do 25 Might and alacrity and you could potentially use ritualist gear as well now so mirage honestly is sitting pretty in some ways it's even better now because again that might access is not going to be so common because everything's going to five targets so being able to apply 25 might is actually a really nice piece of utility um so don't underestimate alac mirage whatsoever oh soi only oh no oh chrono You've never had the easiest time in balance, and oh my goodness, what an absolute axe to the head. What? <laughs> oh no. Well, you hate to see that. So time up the elite skill that grants quickness and slow. This is a pretty weak ability now, because um, it's five target, and you don't really need the quickness application so much. It'll be nice to have a bit of a backup and some larger radius quickness, but this is a very weak elite skill. It's kind of like... I don't think it's very attractive compared to the other options now. The 10 target was really good, and so and same on Signet of Inspiration. Uh, but damn, yeah. That's maybe a little bit of an over-nerf on Signet. Oh, no, is it, though? It kind of isn't. That ability is broken. Um, and, I, and I think Chrono Monster will be fine, too. Like, the good thing about Chrono Monster is it roll compresses really well. Because um, you can do quickness and alacrity and boon extension in one build, which is actually really powerful. So I think that Chrono, particularly tank Chrono, will be very strong. Particularly thing is you've lost Aegis on heal Firebrand now. So that kind of makes it a little bit of a w slightly worse tank. So Chrono will be very, very strong for that tank role. And it does still have great mechanics. Like, Inspiration Trait Line is amazing. You can revive uh, if you want to play the Inspiration Trait Line and give Boon Extension. It means you're going to have to take Inspiration for Boon Extension now because you won't be able to do it without the Inspiration Trait Line. So that actually kind of nerfs the power chrono thing, although you typically wouldn't even play stuff like SOI that much uh, there. You'd be much, very, very aggressive, like very damage focused with just using Seize the Moment for quickness, really, and nothing else is focusing on just pumping as much output as you possibly can. So I actually don't think this is as bad as it looks, particularly seeing as the Inspiration Trait Line and kind of a tankier Boon Chrono is still very powerful, thanks to the amazing utility it can bring with its crowd control, uh, focus pull, the revive trait, Boon Extension, and quickness and alacrity, while being a god tier tank, flat out the best tank in the game. Um, so I actually think Chrono is fine, but yeah, definitely a big deep power creep. SOI being 10 target was dumb, right? It meant that every time you would use that skill on an absurdly short course, down, you would basically give everyone three seconds extra of every boon. I actually think that this is harsh, but it is fair. Another solid change from the skills team here. Necromancer. This one, I, I'm a little confused with this, because they, they nerfed Reaper and Core Necromancer, like, you know, so now... Death Shroud, uh, you typically get 50% damage reduction in Shroud. Now that's going to be 30%. In PvE only, this does not affect PvP. Of course, there's been lots of other changes to PvP uh, that are actually nerfing that down anyway, which is fine uh, because it definitely needs it in PvP. But in PvE, they're nerfing it as uh, the damage reduction. That's really unusual. I never thought they would actually end up doing that. I don't think this is really the end of the world. I mean, it actually, it kind of sucks, to be honest, right? That's a bit painful. Not that painful, to be honest, but hey, unlucky. Poor old Reaper getting kicked while it's not even that amazing. Unlucky. Honestly, it makes it a bit more annoying to play because if you drop out of Shroud with Reaper, you're kind of sad, to be honest. You want to be able to get your full Shroud rotation off, so you're going to have to be a little more careful with that. And they even... Dude... This trait, Passive Contagion, dude, nerf from 10 to 5% of PV. Damn, they're hitting that passive stain. And they nerf Soul Eater as well. Now, these are both pretty strong traits. Parasitic Contagion, a little bit less so, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, because, again, it's kind of this... It's this trait that... You, you don't want to take it because you give up Lingering Curse. You're honestly a lot better off taking Blood Magic for Sustain instead, using the Lifesteal and Transfusion, stuff like that, to heal yourself when you're playing Scourge. So I don't think this is really a big deal because, again, it's pretty weak. I mean, you lose Tormenting Runes as well. That, honestly, this combined with, yeah, because I don't know if you guys, do, do we talk about that yet? Yeah, they nerfed the living hell out of Tormenting Runes, guys. Yeah, now you don't, you only get Regeneration on like a very short, on like a short internal cooldown. Terrible rune now. I'm glad it's dead because that was a ridiculously overpowered rune. I think we can kind of just scroll up and see. I think it's like in an item thing over here. I think, yeah. Oh, ha, 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 ha. 
<laughs> Look at that. Regen, what a terrible rune. I mean, I guess it's, it's maybe like okay on like a Sally build. So you have like permanent regeneration on a Sally build with some healing and boon duration. But man, what an oblivion nerf. Goodness me, that is an apocalypse. This rune was broken though. Dude, I love Aina. D power creeping the game. Let's fucking go, Arena. That's what I'm talking about. Nuking all the broken stuff. And here's one that's been a long time coming. Here we go. Epidemic stacks being copied down to five from 25. <laughs> This skill is, um, is it bad now? Um, you know, it, it's five stacks with 50% duration, because the duration gets halved as well. Is it bad? I, I actually don't think so. Y you know, I'm going to make a very strong prediction. This is not a bad skill, actually. It's, it's not... It's not ridiculously overpowered like it is now. I think that you will actually still play this. Because the, the problem is, is that this is still going to be good for cleaving down adds. You're just going to have to be a little bit more prudent with placing your shades and using your abilities a little bit better. That's the real key here. I think you're just going to, you're going to be rewarded for better usage of your abilities. Because this ability was broken. I'm sorry, guys. This was broken. I'm sorry it was. Guys, I'm sorry, Necro mains. I love Necro. Epidemic was a dumb skill, right? Like, oh, yeah, copy 25 burns to five nearby targets. Oh, that sounds very balanced, guys. Oh, yeah, that's really good to have in a video game. Oh, yeah, just, oh, just a casual 50,000 AoE instant burst damage. Oh, that sounds about fine to me. More than that, probably. Okay, um, yeah, this is dumb. It destroyed mechanics uh, in raids and fractals. This ability had to die. That's it. I'm. We're, that's it. That's a fact. This ability had to die. That's all. Maybe you could give it a teeny tiny bit of duration back, right? So maybe give it 66 instead of 50%, like a little bit more. But I actually think this ability isn't even bad, right? That's still five burns, five bleeds. Five Torment, right? Five Confusion, potentially. Voln, Immobilize, Cripple, Chill, Slow, right? It's still not bad. You aren't going to be able to ignore stuff like 100 CM so easily, Desmina, um, so, um, Desmina stuff. Uh, Epi Bouncing is kind of pretty... It's not great now. Uh, Epi Bouncing is really hard nerfed, which kind of sucks. That was a fun mechanic to go about. So maybe look at changing the duration so Epi Bouncing is a bit better because that's kind of an interesting interaction with a lot of Necros. The, the one thing that you want to talk about this is that it doesn't prevent you from stacking Necros. So if you have five Necros you can still epi out and obliterate stuff, right, with Epidemic and using your shades. So it doesn't really prevent the epi out being really strong. It just prevents, like, the epi bouncing from being very strong, which kind of sucks. But this ability had to die. I'm sorry, guys. There's no defending it, right? The base barrier granted by the skills Sand Cascade, Sand Flare, Desert Empowerment, Desert Shroud, and Sand Surround have been reduced. The contribution of healing power on these skills has been increased. Uh, yeah, I was worried they would do something like this. I, I actually don't think this is a particularly good change. And, and the reason for this is I don't think this actually nerfs Scourge that much. Because realistically, all this means is, is that you're going to have to stack more Scourges to get the same effect. But the problem is there's no punish for stacking more Scourges. So yeah, is this going to reduce the amount of sustain you get um, from having one or two Scourges? Yes, but is it still going to be really, really OP to have like three, four, five scourges? Actually, yes, it is. And honestly, the healing power going up um, or, um, or all this stuff might even be good for stuff like heal necro. And funnily enough, guys, there's another big issue here. So scourge um, never had 10 target. It had like three times four target. This actually means that scourge is one of the very few things that now has 10 target support. Cleanse on F2, barrier on F3, right? All that kind of stuff. And even 10 target cleave, right? With all of its shades being up at the same time. Um, so 
I actually think Scourge is still incredibly powerful. I really don't want people to kind of freak out about this whatsoever. I think these changes are actually justified. I'm actually really impressed that Arena's depower creeping the game this much. Seriously, like, well done, ain't it? Um, these changes are deserved. Um, if they want to have challenging content, I'm sorry, guys. Right? I am simply sorry. If you want to have hard content in the game, you cannot have this stuff be this overpowered. Sorry, you can't. Okay, you cannot do it, right? It sucks even here about 800 or lower. So it's 800 lower, good, right? It was broken. Heal Scourge is a build so broken that in any other MMO, it would be disabled, right? If a build like Heal Scourge existed in retail World of Warcraft, okay, in Final Fantasy, they would disable it. They would not allow you to even play it in a raid. Sorry, it's broken. It is beyond broken. It is the most overpowered build I have ever seen in an MMO. It will be, they turn off the spec and nerf it in one day in another game. Sorry, it had it coming. It had it coming. Ooh, wait, wait, what? Grace of the Land is down from 10 to five. So that's the might. Wait, does Druid... Wait, no. I need to log into the game to test this. Wait, does Druid still have... No. Does Druid still have 10 target protection? And 10... How could they do this? Wait, what? I need to check this. Did they really... Did they really nerf the prot and all the boons on Tempest to 5? But it's all still 10 target on... <laughs> Tempest, no! No! They did! <laughs> oh, Tempest. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Oh, what an absolute disaster. Poor old Ellie just getting walloped. <laughs> well, at least you don't have 10 target might anymore. So that's something, right? That makes a lot more sense as well because... It was always weird that you would apply 10 target might, but only heal five targets on Druid. That was super, super weird, to be honest. So I think this is fine, right? But wow, yeah, this actually sucks. Wow, Tempest is garbo in that case. Ooh, sorry, Ellie Mains. Yikes. Because now Druid still has... Wow. Okay, Druid is giga insane now because it has god tier mechanic handling and it still has god tier boons at the same time. Yikes. Poor old Tempest getting a raw deal there, that's for sure. Half the target cap of, uh, of Druid. <laughs> Unlucky. Well, Druid's looking good because spirits are still around. And you still have excellent boon access at the same time, too. So, yeah, this is going to be very solid, right? Like, stuff like Druid, um, Druid Heal Firebrand, classic combo for strikes. Strikes, uh, raids, all that kind of stuff. You're going to be blasting with that, 100%. Blasting big. And Revenant. Let's see what they do to this. Ooh. Oh, dude, boon rev. <laughs> Rip boon rev, dude. Oh, no. Targets on faster girls from 10 to 5. That actually sucks because Boon Rev is a really interesting build that's essentially been nerfed extremely hard by this change. Not only because you don't have Boon access anymore to 10 targets, you also, oh, you don't give the might with shared empowerment. And even worse than that, you don't have your Shiro F2, uh, the facet of nature, which is a really nifty DPS increase in life still thing there as well. So that's a big ouch. Nice bug fix here to facet of nature, uh, facet of darkness rather. Or battle scars, damage and healing in PvP has been reduced to, to be two times the power of the in PvP. The PvP effect of battle scars is unchanged. Nice! Good nerf to the healing. This is so OP. Man, dude, I love Anet. Okay, look. Oh, you know what? Dude, you know what? There's so many hammers being added. You know, untamed catalyst. Okay, do you know why, guys? It's because Anet is just smashing it. They're just like, gah, 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 hitting all the OP stuff. Good work, Arena. I like that. I mean, the Battles of Gods is still going to be really good, by the way. That's going to be great. That's going to be some really good sustain still. Um, and it was, it, come on, it's still going to be a DPS increase, right? I mean, come on. 
come on guys it's it's fine like it's still it was op i think this is actually a pvp oriented fix by the way on forced engagement uh they're reducing the radius on extra targets to 180 and the rain that is a massive nerf that's a huge nerf to renegade actually this is one of the real key abilities it's the chain you throw up that taunts multiple targets wow that is so much worse you have to be in melee and you need to face them and the radius on extra targets is smaller wow brutal nerf actually to this um you know i I mean, Renegade had started to fall out of the meta anyway, um, much more focused towards Herald. But I actually like this. This was kind of a really obnoxious ability to play against, a very obnoxious design. So actually, I'm a big fan of kind of cutting out some of the annoying things to play against. Because yeah, this is very much a PvP change in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, really good change there. Uh, I think Renegade will still have the potential to be good as this kind of brawler, more teamfight oriented Revenant build, kind of more in line with Vindicator. But this is a very obnoxious skill to play against. So I'm glad that it has actually seen a bit of a, a bit of a tune down there as well. Okay, and yep, Alacrigade, five target Alacri now. Rev is still great, by the way, particularly in Fractals, by the way, um, because basically nothing changes in Fractals, and even in Raids, it will still be strong. Because bear in mind, guys, you actually apply Prot 2 on Alac Rev because you have uh, All for One. The All for One trait means that whenever you put a Spirit down, you actually apply protection to targets as well. So you're basically Prot and Alac for your subgroup, which is more relevant now because there's less 10 target Prot, right? except for Druid. Uh, but still, it will be nice to kind of top up that subgroup with a few more boons there as well. You could even do Might, funnily enough. If you hit your F2 a few times um, on, on your Rev, you can even supplement a bit of Might too uh, by using uh, that F2 skill on Revenants, uh, on Renegade, rather. So Rev is still good. Stop crying about it. It's still going to be good. We all know it. You know it. I know it. Everyone knows it, right? Um, honestly, they could do more than this. They could even go for the... And it has amazing DPS, great CC, fantastic utility, good support moves. Rev ain't going anywhere, guys. It's still perfectly strong. It's not dead, right? It is not dead, guys. That's not true. We all know it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. This change, man. Fixed a bug that caused Legends One to activate certain sigils that activate so I was, oh. <laughs> so, let me explain this. So, certain profession mechanics also cause weapon swaps. Rev Legend was one of these. And, and one of the things that made Rev very good at utilizing sigils was exactly this. Because you could weapon swap, right? Proc your sigils. And you could also proc your sigils by um, legend swapping too. And this was actually a big DPS increase. It made Rev amazing at interacting with these on-swap sigils, stuff like Geomancy and so on. Um, and it was a significant part of, you know, of... of getting value out of your build and increasing your DPS. So this is honestly a, you know, this is going to be a pretty solid nerf, actually. I think more so to the Condi build, I would say, uh, than any of the other builds, because that was where you really utilize these on-swap weapon sigils. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I've got to say, this, this actually kind of nerfs it in PvP as well. This is a bit of an ouchie, because uh, it means if you, say weapon swap with a cleansing sigil you won't get that oh sorry legend swap with a cleanser you won't get that cleanse anymore that's actually a bit of a nerf to every rev spec in the game because of that worth noting thinking about that same with any other sigil that they might add to the game so definitely be aware of that think about that for sure okay um i thought it was intended as well but i guess not um i, I think yeah I, I guess it wasn't or maybe they've decided it isn't anymore uh but yeah that's a fairly sizable nerf to be honest and, and again renegade is one of these builds that is extremely overperforming, right um in pve and well you won't be able to do the righteous rebel full dps build anymore that was very obnoxious very oppressive in pve the high level scene in particular um so yeah they've nerfed condi rev with the weapon swap they've nerfed battle scars which hopefully well they haven't nerfed the damage right so it's still gonna be really good for dps but they should probably nerf the damage too so invocation ends up being a better line for condi so you don't have this crazy sustainer battle scars so i think there's more work to be done here on this but overall good changes to renegade i think um fairly harsh um i i would say like pretty solid nerfs here overall but still again this is going to be an absolute mainstay in end game pve uh, and i would say that herald and probably vindicator are still going to perform well in pvp and world bless the world so i really wouldn't worry about this too much but there you go uh thief I think not, yeah, we already kind of saw a lot of what with Thief. It was mostly PvP oriented, kind of nerfing some of these really powerful Shadow Arts abilities is what went down here that were giving Thief this crazy sustain and stealth access. But wow, dude, invigorating precision. So it was, yeah, that, this was so, but this trait was so busted, by the way. This was it, one of the most insane traits in the game. 20% lifesteal with Fury. 
20%. That was insane. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. So they actually, they, wait, they nerfed this by over 66%. 20% to 6% nerf. <laughs> Aina really want you to dodge. They want you to lose that pass to Zane, right? To Necro, to Thief, uh, to Rev here as well. They're going on, and to Scrapper too, right? Whoa. Honestly, that makes stuff like the the kiting builds, right? A little more awkward on Thief, right? A lot more awkward, actually. Um, on, you know, stuff like the Deadeye build for uh, pylon kiting, for Daredevil kiting as well, if you were going to use this trait there as well. You're going to have to be a little more careful. I mean, yeah, don't get me wrong. This is still very strong. Because let's suppose you're doing 20,000 DPS, right? That's still a very strong heal. Uh, what is that? That's 1,200 health a second, right? Um, if you have Fury. I mean, that's still... Very, very good, right? Let's not piss about, guys, right? That, that's still absolutely pumper uh, there, to be honest. It's a very powerful effect for PvE. Um, so I wouldn't be super worried about this stuff. Do they even hit, do they, they even hit Spellbreaker? Okay, like the least played build in the entire game. Spellbreaker, lifesteal down from 7% to 4%. Unlucky. Deleted, okay? Like, <laughs> I 4% is a lot, guys, right? Seriously, guys, like 4% is a lot of life still. It really is. Um, particularly if you're in this instance PvE style content, it's going to be very, very high value still. Like, will you necessarily take that trait? Well, you don't even take Spellbreaker, right? So, I mean, I wouldn't worry about that. But yeah, that is how it that is how it goes, my friends. You love to see that, my friends. You absolutely love to see it. Dude, they, look, they even got the anti-leech dragon storm in here as well. Incredible gaming, incredible content. Fantastic stuff. I, I've got to say, guys. Okay, I do have to say here, these are some very solid changes. I've got to say I'm impressed. I don't think all of them, are, I don't think they're actually enough just yet. I think the game's got a bit more work to depower creep in the game. I'm a little upset about Tempest. I'm sad that Druid didn't also get five target like defensive boons. They took away its might, which kind of does the same thing because you're going to need another might source. I think it really, the big losers, and I think this is going to be a, a thing for another topic, right? A topic for another video. Big losers here at Tempest. Tempest and Boon Herald, yikes. Ouch, right? Tempest got screwed, loses half of its healing power, basically, because it can't heal as many targets, and it loses um, half of its boon access, whereas Druid doesn't? Ow! Right? Yowza! Okay, that is really going to put a damper on it, um, unfortunately. It, you know, I love Tempest. I really enjoy playing that build. Um, but it's going to have a tough time, right, um, dealing with Firebrand and Druid right now. I, I think you're going to see a lot of Druid heal Firebrand gameplay coming across. I don't think it's over for Tempest, though. For example, I think you could have a Condi Ritualist Tempest. Could be pretty darn interesting, actually. Um, so a build that is doing lots of very heavy condition damage and is also at the same time applying Might uh, Protection. Uh, maybe some Fury in there as well. You can get that going. You know, look, there's some some play there that could potentially be useful. Uh, but definitely, you know, and Vigor 2, like Vigor 2, like in there. It's a bit of a tough sell, but... Uh, you know, there are changes to the new specs. They haven't posted the changes to the new specs. That'll be something that we'll go over later as well uh, at some point. But overall, very solid changes, actually. I, I'm impressed. I wasn't expecting it to be this drastic. I do still think... I, people are going to cry about um, Scourge, Renegade, and um, Firebrand. Uh, Aina, don't listen to them. Everyone in the chat, don't listen to them. All of these specs are still very, very strong. Uh, I don't even think these nerfs are that hard, particularly seeing as Ritualist Gear is going to be amazing for Firebrand. Do not forget that. Ritualist Gear is amazing on Firebrand. Don't forget it. Okay. Yeah, there is... Um, the thing is, yeah, you do lose... Because you don't give Aegis on the heal, that does affect your stalwart speed. But to be honest, you're going to have so much boon duration from Ritualist Gear, you can probably just get away with simply running... Um, you can probably just... Just rune, 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 rune of the Firebrand with um, Ritualist Gear, and you'll have so much boon duration. You'll be completely fine. You'll be A-OK -okay, um, with applying that there as well. Um, you could also uh, just simply change the way you the, change the build a little bit, like more boon duration, um, taking a different skill, for example, and then simply taking... Um, uh, legendary lore, right, for more damage, right? So you can sack damage in your build, right, by adding some more boon duration to it, and then get it back from legendary lore. I, I think Firebrand actually ends up pretty well. Um, 
out of these changes. I, I do think this is quite intelligent too, because this is kind of a broken thing that could potentially break the game. And honestly, just to kind of sum things up here, what Anet's done here is that they've tried to target things that break the game, right? So the lifesteal stuff, the cooldown reduction, epidemic, the ages spam, and honestly, good. Very, very good. And even the barrier application, right? Like nerfing ba barrier is really, really strong. So there's honestly, even now, there's too much barrier in the game. Um, certainly, I think Scourge could even stand to get nerfed potentially a bit more, simply because of how powerful a mechanic barrier really is in the context of PvE and PvP, to be quite frank, actually. Um, so, yeah, I really do not think these changes are um, going to de-meta anything. But yeah, bear in mind, guys, the Ender Dragon specs are very unlikely to outperform these builds anyway. I think they'll be... They're a little bit closer there. They're certainly a bit closer there now, particularly seeing as they've probably been buffed a little bit, and we'll see that later, I imagine, when we get into actually playing the game. Um... But yeah, good changes. Well done to the skills team. Give me more. Oh, I'm hyped. I am so hyped for uh, for the uh, summer now, actually, because we already know there's another patch, like a, a bigger patch, like more rework-oriented patch rather than just numbers coming through um, in, in the summer. Oh, ain't it? Let's go. Let's do it. Oh, ah. <laughs> That's fun. But yeah. Barrier. Good stuff. I'm impressed.